escaped sapiens. You, you mentioned that there are different use cases now coming from Turkey and these various other powers. How does that look? So they're actually doing very, very different kinds of drones than the U.S. is used to. So when we go back and think about our model and the way we've talked about drones for the last bunch of years, it's very much focused on targeted killing. It's very much focused on predator and reaper drones. And it's very much focused on the sort of um, high-end military drones. What we've seen both from China and from Turkey has been selling uh, lower altitude drones that are designed to enable ground warfare. And so we've seen drones that are used for um, target spotting, for example, to get other countries, other governments or other enemies to reveal their positions or just for intelligence practices. I mean, a lot of drones, we talk a lot about targeted killing, but a lot of drone usage is just for intelligence, reconnaissance and surveillance. Mm -hmm. um, and that has been a big change in the way that, that combat has begun to emerge, as we've seen in, in the Greater Karabakh. We've mm -hmm. seen Turkish drones being used by, our, by Azerbaijan to target Armenian tanks and provide a really decisive edge on the battlefield. And that so what was the difference there in that conflict? Uh, why, why was it so de decisive in this case? So in that particular case, Turkey first, Turkey has, has, has a very good drone export program. It can sell quite a few, has a, quite a wide range of models. And it transferred a lot of its models to, Azer to Azerbaijan with support of the government. So the Turkish government was more or less supporting Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan then very effectively used their drones to get into the sky and to spot Armenian tanks. And also then to get Armenian forces to reveal their positions. So you would fly mm -hmm. the drone in the air, someone would take a shot at the drone and it would reveal their positions. And they were able to use it to wipe out a lot of Armenian ground forces, including using loitering munitions, which are basically when the drone has a grenade and drops it on a trench, for example, where people are located. They were able to do that very effectively. And so Armenia had real serious battlefield losses as a combination of both ground force units from Azerbaijan and Turkish drones in the sky, both from loitering munitions, but also just regular drones that are designed to get them to, to sort of appear in public, spot their targets or whatever. That really played a very decisive battle in rolling back a lot of Armenia's territorial advantages and inflicting such losses that eventually they sued for peace. And that's why that's drawn so much attention because those drones that were being used by Azerbaijan are not anywhere as sophisticated as the Reaper drones that the U.S. were using. I mean, they were much smaller, much more cost efficient, much more able to be deployed on a battlefield context, and they were hugely effective. And we've... But they were a step up from what was being used in uh, Syria by ISIS, right? Yeah, so what's being used by ISIS in Syria are largely the commercial drones. Uh, ISIS has actually uh, specialized very much in retrofitting commercial drones with munitions or grenades or so on, and they've been able to do that in order to essentially drop bombs from the sky, right? And, and to put pressure on U.S. forces from the sky. That is different than what is happening here. So I would say if you're thinking about this in kind of tiering of the system, the commercial drones are at one level, the next level up would be what Turkey was selling Azerbaijan, which is integrated with ground units. And that's been very effective. And those sort of um, small drones that are tactical use drones have been used in Libya, they've been used in Syria, and they've now been used in, the, in Azerbaijan Armenia war. I think we're going to start to see that level of drone usage, that sort of small drone usage in order to kind of, in a sense, turbocharge your effectiveness on the battlefield become more and more common in the future. Is the technology mainly restricted to aerial combat or are we also seeing ground-based and I guess submarines and oh, yeah. things like this? Come in. Yeah, no, I mean, unman unmanned technology, the term unmanned technology is moving to a lot of different theaters. Um, and so we're starting to see Ground-based are already ground-based autonomous or, or unmanned autonomous unmanned robots uh, that are designed to conduct tasks. They've moved relatively slowly. Russia has invested more money on them than mm -hmm. a lot of other countries. Uh, where you're really starting to see the explosion of unmanned technologies under the water, uh, particularly for subs, mm -hmm. uh, for looking for mines, for example, but also conducting surveillance. Um, and you know, it makes a lot of sense. If I was going to have a submarine under the under the water that was trying to detect someone's defenses, for example, I wouldn't want to risk people in it. So if I can do that with an unmanned sub, that, that's a great thing. And both the US and China are investing a lot in that. So I would expect the drone war to essentially move to the seas first and, rather than on land. On land, there are a lot of obstacles about just getting them to move as effectively as they should uh, and to enable it. You're also going to start to see drones much, much more being used on the battlefield purposes. I mean, again, we're much more used to the US high level, very expensive, you know, 15,000 feet up style drones you're going to start seeing many, many more drones being used for technical use on the battlefield that's beginning to enable people to fight. So are we in a new arms race, essentially? Yeah, I would argue that we are. I mean, I've written a piece on this that talks a little bit about the race for drones. You know, mm -hmm. in a sense, it's hard to, to judge it because a lot of countries around the world want to build a drone fleet, even if what they want to build when they build a drone fleet 
um, is a kind of boutique or, or symbolic fleet. So, you know, if we go back and look at the number of countries around the world that have drones, it, it's over 100 countries in the world have drones. Many of their drone fleets are relatively small symbolic fleets. They have some that they can fly, they want to show that they can do it. But you are seeing a race in drone capabilities, and you are seeing where more and more countries are trying to get the ability to sort of help their ground forces in the way that we've seen in the Azerbaijan case, or to be able to just engage in, for example, in loitering munitions. So you are starting to see a race around the world for drone technology. And, and certainly as the floodgates have opened for both China uh, and Turkey and to a lesser extent Israel selling to more and more actors, plus the US market exporting as well, we're gonna to start to see more and more of a kind of race for drones and drones capabilities be part of the kind of great powers race that you see among states. Escaped sapiens, 